Welcome to the 38th episode of Under the Radar. I'm super excited to be back. Um, thought I'd be back sooner. Once again, I seem to be pumping out episodes every two weeks these days instead of uh, every week. But uh, nonetheless, been very busy and uh, I'll have more updates at the end of the episode on Slave to Servant and what I'm doing with that. But I'd really like to get into this episode. Uh, today I'm gonna be covering a band um, that is probably uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite bands that uh, was very short lived. Um, and I'm wearing their t-shirt, uh, a band called Duval, um, which uh, by the way is ex-members of Smoking Popes. So Josh Cater, when Smoking, Smoking Popes broke up in 1998, I think, I could be wrong. They disbanded after their amazing record, uh, Destination Failure, one of my favorite records of all time, produced by Jerry Finn. And um, he took a hiatus because he became a born again Christian and um, just was trying to get his life right on track. And after a couple years, felt like he had a lot more to say and uh, wanted to share his faith through music. And I thought that uh, he did an excellent job with this next band, Duval. So Duval, not unlike Smoking Popes, had three of the same members. Uh, for those that don't know, Smoking Popes was made up of three brothers, uh, the Caterer brothers. So you had Eli Caterer, you had Matt Caterer, and you had Josh Caterer. Um, and then you had Mike Flemley on drums. So the only member, at least at the formation of Duval, that wasn't in the band from Smoking Popes was Matt Caterer. They had added a new guitar player named John. And um, on that lineup, I think they made a couple releases. Uh, the first time I heard Duval was actually on 94.7 FM, the Zone's local zone. They were airing the title track off this EP called Standing at the Door. And I was so blown away by the sound of this band super catchy song. Uh, the entire EP was great. This was one of the first, I think, e releases that I ever bought on Double Zero Records, owned by Mike Flumley. Uh Following that EP, they released a split EP with a band called Seville. Now Seville um, ended up becoming Dashboard Confessional, basically, with Chris Caraba. I think that uh, at least two of the members went on, if not all three, went to play with Dashboard. Um, as a touring band and uh, formed his studio band eventually. Um, but the, I do want to mention these releases because um, this EP, for one, is all exclusive material and the Seville songs on here are worth, worth getting your hands on. So if you're going on Discogs, check out the Duval Seville split. I was pretty blown away by both band songs, but Seville's were just out of this world because I have a, an EP by Seville and it's not nearly as good as these songs. So definitely check that out. The reason I'm going through this is after those two releases, um, Duval had a little bit of a member shift and I think they lost John on the guitar and then they also lost Mike on drums. So it left just Eli and Josh. And so Rob Kellenberger, from the band Colossal at the time, uh, who was also in Slapstick and Tuesday, just amazing drummer from Elgin, Illinois, joined Duval, and they were a trio. They put out this single, um, little three song, uh, it's actually a three song CD, I have the seven inch as well, which is just two songs. Two of these songs went on to be part of the release that I'm going to cover today. And uh, one of my favorite releases, uh, of the mid 2000s. I was pretty blown away by it. Their debut full length record, Volume and Density. Now, before I get into this release and showcasing these songs, I wanted to say that uh, at the time Duval being, you know, I guess Josh being a, a born again Christian and talking about his faith more in his music, uh, they were looking to sign uh, with Tooth and Nail Records. And I don't know exactly what happened. I know that Tooth and Nail tends to sign bands for pretty large amounts of time, um, kind of bigger contracts, a lot of records. And I think that just something didn't work out for Josh and what he wanted to do. So they ended up passing on Tooth and Nail, but this record was supposed to uh, initially be 
uh, done with tooth and nail. And um, so when that fell through, having Rob in the band and releasing that EP on Asian Man Records, they just basically, Mike Park funded uh, this record and uh, put it out. And so they recorded with Matt Allison in Chicago at Atlas Studios. And just from the beginning of the record, uh, you knew that this was just a different beast. Uh, the opening track, All In Your Hands. Don't let your love be wasted on me I'm no good at all Everything I'm hoping to be Is all in your Personally, I think that uh, you can really tell that this band really did pick up musically uh, where the Destination Failure record left off. And I think you can really hear um, kind of like the reminiscent sound of Destination Failure in this next song. A song called I'll Be Around. How does that old song go? I forgot the word. Um, so the next song that I'm going to play was on the original EP, it was the title track Standing at the Door that I was showing you earlier, and they re-recorded it, and this is probably, probably like my second or third favorite Duval song. It's just such a catchy song, it's like a Weezer song, like early Weezer um, vibe to it. Um, a song once again called Standing at the Door. What did you say? I can't hear anything with these headphones on I like to play my music just as loud as it goes It empties my mind and helps me with my time It distracts me from the sound in my heart the door what did you say I just can't concentrate with the TV on I like to sit real close to the screen if you know what I mean those people on there they seem like good friends to me sound in my heart Can you make that sound go away? It keeps knock, knock, knocking all day I think there's somebody there Standing at the door Ooh, 
Now, the next two tracks on this that I'm going to play were from the single uh, that was on Asian Man Records. And uh, the first one was an original and the second one is gonna be a cover. So this first one is called Racine and it's a story I believe that Josh wrote it about his wife uh, when he had met her and he kept traveling to Racine um, to see her. And it's kind of just a, a cute, like, romantic song. Uh, on the original tip, I would say that this is, uh, for me, probably, I don't know, this and, this and Standing at the Door are my two favorites uh, by them, as far as originals go. I really love Racine. Plastic pieces falling down the chute and I am counting them like trees. Everything's green. cover song and uh, Smoking Popes was not um, a stranger to cover songs themselves. Uh, on Destination Failure they covered the song Pure Imagination from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and did a stellar job on that and uh, probably one of my favorite covers of all time honestly. Um, so they took a Duval spin and used it on a Spandu Ballet song called True. So true, funny how it seems Always in time, but never in line for dreams Head over heels, when toe to toe This is the sound of my soul This is the sound I bought a ticket to the world But now I've come back again Through my hand, sand. 
becomes a time of its own Take these seaside arms and write the next line I want the truth to be known classic 80s song. I mean, that's been in like 16 Candles and Wedding Singer and just a, a, an awesome, one of my favorite 80s songs probably is that song True. Really, really great song. Great choice, great spin. Uh, always enjoyed uh, them playing that one live. And um, one thing to note also is just how awesome the addition of Rob on drums and backup vocals on this record. Uh, there's a lot of really cool moments. Um, there's some, there's some on this next song that I'm gonna play as well. But, uh, you know, the faith piece, uh, I thought that it was really rather brave of Josh Cater to come out swinging with his faith and just making music. And I applaud him for, for doing so because he got a lot of heat from the punk scene and indie scene and just people just, you know, weren't a fan of this whole Jesus thing. And I thought that was really cool that he just, he would answer people on his uh, guest page, and um, I didn't even think that his music was so overtly Jesus-oriented. But I mean, I'm, I know the message was there. Uh, but the last song on this uh, release, uh, a story that Rob told me uh, once when they were on tour on this record, um, he played this song, and there was this punk kid, this like in Utah or something, I can't remember where they were at, but uh, he said that this, Dude, they just totally didn't expect it. He just walks up to him. He's like this, uh, you know, leather jacket, mohawk guy. And he just walks up and he was like, that was one of the most powerful things I've ever heard. And so this song uh, is one of the more overt messages of Christianity, which is a song called Jesus Never Leaves Me. probably don't know about it, but it's just an amazing song. Now I will say that uh, I found it very disappointing that this record wasn't uh, as well received as it could have been. Um, I think that some of these songs are just, I mean I took notes from some of these songs when I was writing stuff with Dorm Life for our second record. Um, I, took, I took ideas and just the way that Josh structured things. Josh's vocals, he's one of the greatest singers ever, and I, I've said this before, I don't think on this series, but I, I remember saying this to Jamie Wolford of The Stereo uh, when I was meeting with him in Arizona. Um, I feel that punk rock typically um, doesn't have very finessed singers. Um, they have good singers, powerful singers, but not necessarily ones with uh, 
pipes and, and a, a finesse and a croon. And Josh Cater, his voice is just, he's, he's one of the best. Um, he has a little bit of that Morrissey feel, but then a little bit of that Frank Sinatra feel. And it's just, it's a very unique combination of his own that um, just allows him to stand out. Um, there's nobody else that sounds like Josh. And, and I'll say this also further, is that uh, in the realm of stuff that I've covered and bands like Fall Out Boy, bands like Motion City, bands like even me, like as a singer, like I try to have more of a soulful, like finesse and some grit. And I think that for me, like the godfathers of that are like, I'd probably go back to Chad Price from All, uh, one of the greatest. And I think that Jamie Wolford definitely is in there, but uh, right there with them, um, and I would say above Jamie Wolford just because of the time frame is Josh Caterer. Those three are just, um, they painted the landscape for modern um, pop punk and emo and indie rock, whatever you want to call it, like just having like a powerful vocalist. Um, really great singer, really underrated record. Uh, I, I remember when I went on the bicycle tour in 2005 um, with Plea for Peace Foundation, Mike Park. And uh, right before I left, the last show that I played was with Duval, was when I was playing in Dorm Life. And uh, the show was, I wouldn't say it was quite sold out, but it was at Clearwater Theater in West Dundee. It was, it had to be at least like 350. It was a pretty good sized show. Um, fast forward after that and the bike tour, after coming back, the Smoking Popes reunite. And then we ended up playing another show at Clearwater Theater with Smoking Popes. Probably their, one of their first like, I don't know, six to 10 shows back as a band. Um, and it was completely sold out. It was like, what, 550 capacity kind of venue at Clearwater. Then fast forward again, so this is 2006 now. I went to go see Duval play. They had scheduled another summer show at Clearwater. There were probably like 150 people there. And it was, you know, after you get your old band back together of Smoking Popes, obviously Smoking Popes was a much bigger deal. Um, so they had that running against them. But I just know that this record, a lot of money went into making it. And uh, I know that Mike Park lost out a little bit on it. But if you haven't heard this record in full and you like what I'm talking about, I really suggest you should go on Discogs and find it. It's out of print, I think, at this point. I don't think it's ever been pressed on vinyl. But uh, it's just a great 12-song record. Uh, solid Matt Allison production. Um, Again, it leaves off right where Destination Failure uh, ended. Uh, and I honestly, in some ways, think that Duval has some better qualities than Smoking Popes in some ways. Um, I think that this record's better than anything that Smoking Popes has made since they reunited. Um, it's a phenomenal record. So check out Volume and Density. And uh, yeah, in other news, I have been working on red tape scripting, um, got a guy that's helping me write some like fake commercials, which will be pretty fun. Also just got a view of the Pearls video that Shimon, my buddy, finished. So hopefully soon I'll drop that. Uh, I know that we're gonna be releasing another digital single for Mutton soon through Third String Records, as well as the four song EP Aletheia um, in the coming months. But uh, yeah, nothing substantially new other than uh, I'm getting a new apartment, so I'll have a different setup soon. Um, have a different wall that I'll be shooting on, which will be cool. Looking forward to, to moving into a new town. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, again, thanks for reaching out in your emails, your comments, your subscriptions. Really appreciate that. Hopefully I'll have a new episode pretty soon. But I think this was a nice wrap up to all the 2003 uh, releases. And uh, so I'll be getting into 2004 and beyond now. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time.